So, how does one go about making a driver? This is in the context of Plan 9 and 9 Front, which is actually a good place to be if you were learning, because they are playing catch up with other open source projects. So you have some working examples to look at. I'm going to start with USB devices, since they can be done without needing to recompile kernels. Uh, USB is one of those technologies that's both very cool and very obnoxious. I'm old enough to remember the transition to USB and having a standard plug that could be hot swapped was really cool. Um, but USB also tries to be all things to all people and filling in the gaps is often left to programmers. First things first, we need to know what sort of devices we're talking to. So you can look at the packaging for serial numbers and part numbers. Um, you can plug the device in and uh, check for the vendor and ID number for the device. So in plan nine here, that's catting the little hash U device, this little kernel device, USB, CTL, and that will list everything that's plugged into the system, whether it has a driver for it or not. So um, then you can start doing Google searches for the sort of uh, numbers and chipsets and figure out what kind of chip the device itself is actually using. Um, when you know the specific chip for a program, and since we're playing catch up, uh, you can start looking for open source projects to see how they get the device working. Uh, sometimes you luck out and the manufacturer gives out data sheets for it. Sometimes you don't luck out and they give out data sheets that are incomplete or just wrong. Um, in previous videos, when I was doing stuff with I2C devices, all that was just going off data sheets because the Linux and Raspberry Pi related code was huge piles of Python I didn't want to bother sifting through. But before we can read other people's USB device code, we need to know how USB works. And this will be just the basics for now. Everything on the USB hub shows up as an endpoint. And those endpoints can have several sort of sub endpoints. Um, endpoint number point zero will be the control point and have things like the vendor and device ID and will be where you first send commands to set up the device. Um, there's a standard frame sent to these points. Um, first in it will be the BM request type, which is eight bits and sets if you're going to do a read or a write, um, what sort of command you're sending. So we have standard class vendor um, and who's going to be receiving it. Um, the next eight bits is a request and that is mostly used for standardized commands that do things like fetch the vid and did numbers. Um, then there will be the sort of W value index and length and those are for talking to the chips inside the USD B device uh, itself. And uh, with that basic info in mind, let's see how other systems send USB commands. I'm going to use OpenBSD right now because, uh, well, they put in a lot of effort to have easily readable code. Um, so according to their manual, uh, BM request type and other info gets packed into a structure and that gets sent off to a USB control function. And I have this TP-Link brand USB Wi-Fi dongle. And I searched for the vid and did numbers. And I got that this is a Realtek RTL 8188EU. Um, check to see if OpenBSD has a uh, driver for it, and they do. And then I went through their code looking for where that is. So knowing what they put in their device requests. So here is a function they have to write to a USB device. So it takes the BM request type, the request, you know, the function here gets an address that gets passed along to the W value. Um, I guess W index on this thing's always zero. And uh, then there's the length, which also gets passed in. And then they have a pointer to a buffer. 
to that uh, you'd have the data you want to write in it and see so they pack it all up and send it all off to this USB do request to some USB device with this little structure and the data you want to send. So down here we see the read version of it where they made a little read function to read their USB device and in it's the same sort of thing. Um, between the two you can see that the BM request type is you know for the write is set to write and vendor and then the read one is set to read and vendor type. Um, so one of the things you'll see a lot of is you're going to have to go through a bunch of header files to track down these little macros here. So whatever the request type is, is this value here. Um, and you might have to backtrack through a lot of header files um, to find these specific values for these sort of things. So you have to keep in mind that these chips are put into all sorts of devices um, and you may end up backtracking through separate, uh, several header files because um, these registers might be shared between both the USB Wi-Fi dongle and maybe a PCI you know, Wi-Fi card. Um, so then they have some other little read functions we can go see where those get used. So, and you can see here, you know, if you want to read one byte, you know, they have a thing, they have, you know, some uh, register to read from. And uh, well, this starts the actual hard part of writing drivers, uh, which is really just the tedium of figuring out the order that a bunch of tiny switches need to be flipped so that you can, you know, flip them and then uh, read back the tiny switches that you're interested in. So let's see how uh, Nine Front does this. So this is going to be one of those things that is different between the Legacy Plan 9 and Nine Front. Um, in Legacy 9, the source code for the USB stuff is in sys source command USB. And in 9 front, they changed that to NUSB. So first off, we'll go to the lib directory and check out the USB header file here. So this is going to have the stuff that you will need to talk to a USB device. Um, so like some of those things with the request type here, they have little macros for them. So for host to device or device to host, whether you're um, writing or reading, um, here's the bit to set vendor or class, all that sort of stuff. Um, a couple things you'll need right off the bat are the, let's see, you'll need the uh, get device function, which you put in the number place for an endpoint, and it'll spit back this little dev structure. And then the other one is the USB command itself. And so we can see here it takes a dev for the USB device you're talking to. You have your request type, your request, value, index, length, and then a pointer to your buffer. Um, actually, let's see where the dev... There we go. And here's the dev structure itself holds various little bits of information for you. Um, so yeah, as we saw in like the OpenBSD example, they had a little macro for um, an all-in-one sort of uh, read and write of, of type vendor. So all you'd have to do is, you know, put these in and pour them into the uh, type um, argument. So let's uh, 
Let's look at an example of a Ethernet dongle under nine front. So we could see here, same sort of thing. They made a little function for reading and writing and they packed in the actual USB command. So for this particular ethernet dongle, you can see it has, you know, vendor device. This is device to host. This is host to device. And it's just sort of ored together. Um, they have the, uh, write and read reg here. So when you pass for the write here, it'll pass in some value to write and a register. And so those get put in here. There's a pointer to the value and the size of the value. Um, and then do a little check and return whatever gets done. Same down here for the read. Um, if we go down to the init function and we can see here they're flipping all the little bits to turn everything on doing lots of little writes setting various things and so the init function would get called by ether c here So the USB daemon will, you know, check to see what gets plugged in, see if it's an Ethernet device, fire this up to go see if it's one that they have a driver for. If it is, it'll send off to the init. The init will go turn everything on. Um, and then there's a whole sort of thing in here being plan nine that everything will get mounted as a, uh, as a file system too. So there'll be code in here for you know, handling the 9P and making everything look like files and you have all the stuff for opening, closing, reading, writing. And I'll leave it there for now. So find some USB device you have laying around and you want to use with 9Front. Figure out what sort of chips are in it. And if anyone's written an open source driver for it, uh, then start uh, reading through those to see... Uh, if you can figure out what switches they're flipping and in what order. Uh, some of them will require a firmware, uh, firmware be uh, uploaded to them, so check for that. And in the next video, I'll show some code on reading and writing to the control interface on a USB device. And until then, have fun.